So wait, okay. This was easily the best movie that we've watched. So this entire what movie podcast series series really well I don't, I don't know what you guys watched but i watched that new medea flick yeah <laughs> no. and after, easily the best movie we've watched. <laughs> yep that one good afternoon you know ryan Two. you can't even improv well because medea hasn't made a movie in like three years she's That's retired the true. character she that had her funeral, true. right didn't medea die oh, you fucked, you're she's back up, bro right now, netflix William netflix Sonic original idea. What? Bob Gunk up go, your Google search with this right now. Turn it is safe a search shame off, that, um, and I don't, as I'm sure this is over talked about, but the uh, at the Oscars after uh, after Will Smith slapped him, uh, Tyler Perry came up and talked to Will Smith, and it's just such a shame that he didn't do it in Medea character. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, child! <laughs> Medea homecoming, but she died. She died. How did she die? Or it was a family like funeral. Hair, okay, wait. whatever. I watch. Oh, I watch an old Medea. I'll wait for Medea Far From Home. Okay, it's a little Spider-Man. <laughs> it's a little Spider-Man fun. Oh no, we watched what? Repo Man. <laughs> Repo Man, it. 1984, directed by Alex Cox. <laughs> Suppose you're thinking about a plate of shrimp. Suddenly somebody will say like plate or shrimp or plate of shrimp out of the blue. No explanation. No point in looking for one either. It's all part of a cosmic unconsciousness. You eat a lot of acid, Miller, back in the hippie days? And the theme of this Alex month is, is L.A. Jobs. Alex Cox. Grow Alex up, Adam. Adam. His name is Alex Adam. Get it? No. Because you're a cop. No, Come on, dude. Don't do that. Don't be crass in front of Mike. Okay. <laughs> Stop fighting. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Uh, yeah, we got Mike Weeby here. Hey, everybody. To, to, sorry, what did you say? I said thank you, everybody. Oh, Hi. Yeah. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> yeah, do, you see why, do you see why he's like the worst podcast? <laughs> well, it glitched out on my hands. I didn't want to, you know, I wanted <laughs> you to have like y'all never seen uh, Repo Man before? No, I hadn't. It, it, is, uh, it is one of my all time favorite movies. Yeah, I yeah, used they... to watch this movie a lot as a kid. That's when I first saw it. I thought it was a hilarious 80s comedy as a child. Yeah, it was, you like was... the scumbag Repo Man part of it, William, right? Because Mike no, got I like, into, the, like... I like the aliens. Mike, Mike, Ryan said you're saying like you got this movie introduced you to punk. Kind of, yeah. I mean, like there was the the it was in the cult classics section, and I'm you know I was aware of like punk on some level, but this uh, really kind of it's like continued to grow over the years, uh, and it's, it's such like a L.A. punk specifically like L.A. punk. There's a lot of like uh, the Circle Jerks show up a couple times as the band, and uh, the guy that plays um, Evan. Yeah, is Andrew Schloss, uh, the, nerdy, he, the nerdy guy at the supermarket? The nerdy and, guy, like yeah, he's a he was he's a, a member. Musician? Yeah, he was in the Circle Jerks, and he was actually he he like later in life becomes Joe Strummer's like when Joe Strummer went solo from the Clash, he's like Joe Strummer's like main kind of musician guy. He's like this incredible guitar player, and I've I've known him for a while uh, just through like music and stuff, and he's a real sweetheart about it, and 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 comfortably. Uh, He's been very kind to allow me to pester him with questions about Repo Man because it's such like, and then, and then when I was in college, actually, Alex Cox came and gave a little. Wait, uh, what was his last name? Alex Penis. <laughs> uh, Alex, oh, Alex man, a... Dick uh, came and gave a gave a little thing about it, and uh, I don't know, you know, it's it's such a weird like it's such like a cross section of 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 that punk scene at that time as opposed to like every other film and there's still some silly goofiness of like the you know the i'm punk because i'm evil but there's there's a lot of like actual kind of la vibes about it that are pretty i think pretty accurate it's also 
you know, anytime I'm I'm in LA because I grew up in Texas, I feel very comfortable out there. And this is like a a definitely like a quintessential part of that is because everything's shot out there in LA, so everything feels like an exterior of a thing that there's like a weird nostalgic sense memory of of every location out there that I can't even, even though you didn't grow up there, even though I didn't yeah. grow up well, there because I was mostly raised by a television, and um, mm-hmm. it was it's uh, LA. L.A. and Repo Man have this like super intense connection because it's really like running around like the, you know, the shittier parts of downtown. And well, it's not shitty yeah. anymore. That's the thing. Like I lived yeah. right where uh, most of this movie takes place. And it's now like so built up. It's so different. There's really? like lofts and like condos and fancy coffee shops and also all a bunch of the locations now look so different but really this yeah, they changed it to, looked like they changed it to make people like william more comfortable <laughs> yeah <laughs> also for the for the audience i should say mike weeby is a punk rock star he's in punk Hold rock on. bands and Hold they're on. stars oh, uh, yeah. i wouldn't i would riverboat gamblers dracula so he i just for to preface for people that don't know Mike Weeby. Yeah, I, I, w- I wouldn't put the star. He's probably like the biggest punk rock star. Probably one of the biggest. I'm no so. Jared Leto. I mean, come on. Oh, shit. True. <laughs> I'm no Dr. Michael Morbius. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> the other thing is um, Alex Cox. The movie he made directly after this was Sid and Nancy. And that's yeah. another that's like a New York, L.A. Oh, New York. Well, I guess London. But there's, I mean, like it's shot in L.A. and New York, but that's another like punk movie. Yeah, um, that's pretty authentic. Um, and then he immediately yeah. got incredibly weird. Like, I think like every <laughs> every every film afterwards was kind of pretty much an experimental thing. Did he do that Walker movie? Was that the one? I did Walker. Because I because hell because Walker was cool or like it was just interesting to see. That's like a studio movie, a big studio movie. And it's like about some you know, like <laughs> revolutionary shit about well, or it's Alex about like american Co- like Cox a, a is um shit. obsessed with spaghetti westerns and, and yeah so he started making like westerns For a second, there I is thought, a western vibe in you're just Repo gonna say Man. spaghetti <laughs> he just got really into spaghetti <laughs> he, well, yeah, like he did a twist. straight to hell which is pretty much a uh it's a spaghetti western. It's but it has like straight to hell. It's I think set in the at in the current day of the time, but it's completely like out in this kind of western. It's got like Courtney Love and um, Joe Strummer is one of the stars in it, and Cy Richardson from from uh, Repo Man is in it too. Uh, mm-hmm. The you read diuretics that will change your life. I mean, this kind of had some. Well, I mean, it's like a detective. Repo Man has like that really fun to uh partner buddy cop detective feel to it which yeah. kind of is a well, kind of a wild, we should, wild west vibe we should talk about this yeah. because uh the theme for this month is la jobs so this is the first of our la jobs movies and one thing i would like about repo man is that you see him get the job at the beginning of the movie so it's not just like any movie about a guy with a job I'm trying to figure out movies where a guy gets a job and then I'm yeah. a little confused as to how he got the job too. It's a good theme, William. Well, that's like, because the he guy just drove up and he and high and at four in the morning or two in the morning. But it was um he needed yeah, Harry Dean. The guy Sandin, just walked up and was like, Hey, take this car. He's like, I need your help getting this car because he's driving his car, right? So, yeah, well, he just okay, he tricks gotcha. him into doing the repo job. Just because I'm sure, I guess he didn't want to get shot at or something. I think I think Harry Dean just Harry Dean will do anything to get to get, get the job done. But he's probably a lot more seasoned than than uh, than Emilio well, Estevez. He's not going to get shot at. He's figured out all the ways to like grift grift his way through. Yeah, you know, this, and that's the safer version of it. What's interesting about Emilio Estevez's character Otto is that he's 18 years old. He's pretending to be 21. He's Young and naive because he got tricked, but he's also yeah, that's how it goes, man. Kind of, um, <laughs> he's kind of aged and cynical because his life is so shitty. Like his parents are like burnout boomer hippie oh idiots my God, who, become, those guys. <laughs> who like give all their money to like a Christian church. They yeah. smoke weed and watch televangelists. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was really like. I mean, I think that was a good. 
example of 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 the vibe that was turning probably kids that age into like punk rock kind of stuff this like disaffected uh you know boomer boomer parents who were still kind of or former ex, hippies ex hippie parents well like the bullshit of hit the hippie subculture yeah. like seeing well it's just it's dead it it's just over there's the the hippie thing is dead and it's not capitalism yeah. one and baby. they also but they also capitalism became like one yeah, i didn't, they became I didn't like sell out i sure. bought in Mm. Ooh. but also like this theme is like <laughs> growing pains uh the parents are hippies and the kids conservative alex keaton played by michael j fox and then like valley girl the parents are like hippies have a health food store and then but the kids are just like suburban vapid materialistic kids so it's like yeah like you could become a punk but you could also become conservative like it's just no one's a hippie anymore that's the thing yeah yeah, the hippie they, evolved, thing they literally dead. evolved into they just evolved into punks. Yeah, totally. That's like the new generation of hippies. Because they like wow. hippies, hippies, they're like <laughs> his parents were like, man, frick the man. And then now the kid's like, man, frick my parents, and also frick the man. And then they put frick. a yeah. and then he frick. or or frack. That's, and then they put a cross on there. That's more that's more accurate scene lingo. Yeah, and I I like was that just the earring made him punk? The, I he just you had know one. He only just That's it. his attitude. His, and his no, haircut. no, no, no. no. He had a military haircut. haircut. That, well, that was like a crazy thing. Like back then, getting your hair just like a shaved head or like a buzz cut was considered this sort of. But his was like a military cut. His yeah, was like it was a like top. Yeah, that was like it was not the style. Yeah, well, he's that not a real not, punk either. That, he's kind of in. He doesn't feel fully um immersed in that world in that world he because even he, he's kind of rejected by his friends like his girlfriend yeah. cheats on him um well that's the most punk rock thing you could do and i think cheated on by your on girlfriend. Get, it's to get cheated on by your girlfriend. Yeah, oh that's yeah why oh, i have yeah. got i got real yeah, punk <laughs> yeah. that yeah. makes you a really big punk rocker then ryan <laughs> oh my god dude you haven't even heard some of the I albums guess. i've been recording no i mean i fucked your girlfriend yeah yeah, we all fucked what Ryan's up? girlfriend. I'm Ryan, and this is the cuckold. One, two, three, four. <laughs> uh, that, that, uh, that's that's pretty what? fucking. Cocks are the, the punk new punk. Old. Right, guys? The yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Cut, sorry, cut, cool. And then, yeah, it goes like hippie, punk, and then cuck. cuck. Nothing more punk than the only way to fight the, capitalism. Man, your wife. Yeah, that's the only way that we can knock down, take capitalism down one peg, getting pegged one time at a one peg at a time. <laughs> it is. Uh, it, I, it is like this weird mix of like a film noir, a Western uh, set in L.A. mixed with punk rock, mixed with like this sci fi sort of uh, Cold War. Plus paranoia. comic books. There's but a lot of a, Zap comics it, influence. It like looked Robert like a comic Crumb. book. What yeah. is that? Oh. And and the, the you know, I think like the script is so is so tight, like every little thing gets a callback by the end of it is, is another like yes just every yeah every little nice. piece that's set up gets this weird throwback that just you know there's always kind of a response to where like you know uh he he you know he, his car hits some some uh some uh, uh trash the metal trash cans and then later you'll see the woman screaming about the trash cans that got that got knocked over like well into the i think it's yeah because like he, he was just looking at that's when he meets his uh the, yeah. the love interest and he's just like hey hey that scene kind of stressed me out for because i'm like you're gonna run into something bro like he just 90 degree turned his head just 90 degree and just kept driving and yelling at this broad and like she was hot but well, there's one, and but there's like a scene, and there's a woman oh, yelling about, about that, trash cans. There's a scene like way later in the police office that the old woman's there again talking yeah. about how her and, about her. and uh, yeah. just some of the. Well, the other thing is like all those they have all those little beats, but then apparently the director was letting the cast like improv dialogue. So there's also lots of improv and like oh. really there's like a really nice hangout vibe to the way the like Repo Men hang out and the Repo Men. We should talk about because they're not punk at all. They're just like blue collar, like. Well, he says you got to dress like a square because it's easier. People, like, people, like people yeah, don't like, give you shit because if you dress, yeah, that's why he starts wearing the tie and stuff. So they're kind of sense. punk, right? They're just kind of schlubs, to be honest. 
Well, they're just like working Joes, you know. They're and kind like, of they're, also the most yeah, but that's cynical. a shitty job, dude. Harry that's Dean a, is that's not a fun job to have. Yeah, they're both cynical. All both groups are like yeah, just, extremely it's a cynical. And Harry Dean is like the the apex cynical guy. You have so, to be because you're literally like taking cars from poor people that can't afford yeah. their bills. Some of them, like the rich people, that was funny when or kind of when he's like, what was one of the lines? He was like, uh, man, all these millionaires, all these never millionaires, like they never pay these bills. And I'm like, damn, maybe I should quit paying my bills and I'd be a millionaire. Uh, you don't pay your bills, shot, Ryan. I'm rich as shit, too. <laughs> I pay them. I just use it. I just pay them with credit card and then I don't pay off the credit card. Ah, yeah. Brilliant scam. And then, I, and then my credit, and then never. my credit card gets so full and then they call me and I'm like, well, I can give you a hundred bucks. And then they're like, yeah, okay. And then I pay, I buy it out. I buy thousands of dollars for a, a $100. You're in a and I, joke. And you're then, in uh, joke debt now. You always do then- jokes <laughs> for, for those three setups. <laughs> that was not, that was actually true. But um, um, that's the credit card scam nobody's telling you about. Yeah, Harry Dean Stanton apparently didn't really get the movie and was like, didn't really like the director and was like, thought he didn't want to memorize his lines. And he made this movie Tulane Blacktop and he said, Warren Oates just has his lines taped on the inside of the dashboard. I want to do that. And then like the director was like his first movie and he was really um, just like, freaking out you know what to do but apparently the other thing about this movie is that it it's shot by one of the greatest cinematographers who ever lived robbie moeller yeah maybe the best cinematographer when it comes to like southern california or the southwest like he shot paris texas and to live and die in la and the the crew respected him so much so alex cox would get harry dean stanton to do things by saying like hey can you do it for robbie yeah and robbie's just (laughs) this like chain smoking german dude who yeah yeah let's do it for robbie and it was like a weird get i'm trying to remember (laughs) is that a good german impression how they got robbie mueller like it was a weird like some of this came about from them being like in ucla together and of course they and and, well he was making a transition to america uh he had he was leaving germany so he was kind of easy to get. Robbie Mueller also shot a lot of um, Jim Jarmusch movies. Yeah. That, are, that look really good, like Down by Law and Dead Man, I think he shot. Like, the guy's just a lighting master and he's really subtle, but he, he makes everything look natural. But he's really good at mixing color. It's like this, he, it's like a very subtle thing that he does. But you'll, if you watch any movie he shot, you'll just never see a bad shot. There's just yeah. no bad shots. Yeah, that that's yeah, literally what so good. I was kind of in awe, to say the least. Um, I was high. Wow. He also shot Barfly. Uh, the... <laughs> there's a color palette. He shot Barfly. To... Yeah. Ooh. There's a color palette to Repo Man that's really. It, I don't know. It just it really sticks out, and it to me it really typifies L.A. Like it captures the vibe well, east of la of, yeah east LA. Downtown well yeah LA. my and again my and my sort of perception when i'm coming there which is not very often i'm only there a couple times a year but um mm-hmm. briefly and it, there is there, and definitely where i used to go like the 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 punk like i mean because i started doing shows in like in the early 2000s out there and it's definitely it's for sure changed and uh the places even that i'm at but like a lot of that man it just felt so familiar because of that movie and we were definitely staying in a lot of east la a lot of like echo park type places and it just really um but that color just that sunny everything's concrete you know like the shine off of concrete everywhere yeah. it feels really uh really herb- like and of course like the 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 driving shots in the la river are i love anything yeah. i love anything when we get a shot of the la river i i love i love course. la river or the, bridge. Quite, the two downtown bridges which they show yeah. all the time. It, can you just drive on there? There's a, there's like a car access because then you see it in a bunch of movies. You see people driving down the Greece, Fast and the Furious. This movie, there's always a car chase in that river. Yeah. This this yeah, is the, the first movie been down that, there. Uh uh-uh. And I used Dude, to live. If like, you want to skip, I lived the, like, in the Boyle one Heights. T- I was like right there. Yeah, you can get from Boyle Heights to fucking uh, West Adams, yeah, and no problem. That was just the first time I saw. You just take the river, bro. 
<laughs> How crazy would that be if you, you y'all just it, saw just me in my my ninety two Buick when I was living there? My ninety two Buick Century just a great shortcut <laughs> with one uh, my, immediately my pulled over my back right tire. You can get from the valley to downtown in like twenty minutes if you just hit the river. But I've never seen a movie show a Pro car tip. like the where the cars actually drive out of the yeah. Where are the access tunnel. points? I don't know, but I saw I saw the no. exit, and that was that excited me. I did. You know what? One time I think we were driving past there and we saw some drag racer people down there. Oh, really? They, they That's weren't awesome. racing. I've yeah, seen, but there was, there was a crew, there was a crew of people out. Yeah. And they they might have been filming stuff. I they didn't see cameras, filming. but it looked like a like a car club of some sort. We're gonna do some kind of. Some kind of race thing, some some sort of cool car tricks. Yeah, I know you they shoot so many. Car up and... I think movies shoot down there uh-huh. because you never have to worry about traffic. You never have to worry about like yeah. people on the road. Or, like it's just, it must be a very easy place to shoot. So oh yeah, yeah. it's probably like a shooting. You can yeah. like a lot of shooting location. And it's also, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, for any movie that you find a body, like it's it's it like it's a great yeah, location you gotta, you gotta for find body finding, and it makes sense that somebody would throw a body in there and uh you know it's, it's a great shot for looking down and uh the killer uh, covered in semen this one covered in semen. <laughs> head to toe i deduce head to toe. <laughs> i deduce he got covered halfway down the fall though midair yeah so mid-air. another thing we should talk about that's a good is mystery the uh that's the the trunk of the car with the light <laughs> coming out that's yeah. um that's from a movie called Kiss Me Deadly. That's a 50s noir. That's about uh, a briefcase with like an atomic bomb in it. So, oh, because that's pulp. a Pulp Fiction thing too. Yeah, and apparently yeah. Alex Cox is like really mad at Tarantino for oh, doing really? the same thing in Pulp Fiction. But it's like, you didn't come up with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah don't be stupid. You got it from the on, same dude. movie he did. Yeah. Don't live up to your namesake, you know? Yeah, that, that was Kiss cool. Me Deadly is an awesome, like it, there's a through line that kind of, to me, that really makes sense in that like, Kiss Me Deadly is a film noir movie set around this, you know, glowing thing out of a car that doesn't completely make sense. Like, it, it's, it's pretty bizarre. They never really explain in Kiss Me Deadly why there's, like, nuclear energy coming out of this. This It's like a standard kind of detective movie about, like, oh, there's a thing we got to find. And lots of, uh, just like uh, Repo Man, a lot of, like, like, you know, dead ends and things that call back. Plus and then, the girl. And the end, there's a girl yeah. in this movie. There's a lot yep. of the tropes. There's always a girl. It'd be like if there was like a trunk, a, mo- a detective movie with a trunk and you open it up and it's full of semen. <laughs> right? Just glowing, just bright. How would you yeah. it'd be stuck together? Yeah. You'd be hard like, to open. Uh, that's, and that's how the guy got covered in semen mid-fall. Mm, yeah. Mystery solved. Mystery solved. solved. What, about, what about Pulp Fiction? What if, the brief, what if the briefcase was full of cum? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Like, and those college kids it. bought it, and they're like, "You're catching on." We didn't Radioactive realize that, cum. Yeah, Marcellus Wallace needed his cum so badly. I mean, if there's that much cum anywhere, it's gonna be radioactive, basically. Yeah, you know. Radioactive, radioactive. That's that was a song radioactive about cum. Radioactive no, no. cum. <laughs> Speaking of Pulp Fiction, um, another thing that's interesting about this movie is like, I know he's quoting a song, but like, they do pop culture references, like they're singing the Seven Up. Oh yeah. yeah. Song. Although the, what's I just realized like he's singing the seven up song, but all the products are generic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I always thought that was a, a big choice hole. that well, I always thought that it was a choice that they, big you know, like uh, this idea that everything is um <laughs> that everything seven was up, those white no cans seven and up. stuff. But yeah. apparently that they really sold those. That was just like generic shit that they sold, and that's all they could afford. Is what Alex well, yeah. Oh, wow. well, here's cool. the deal. It's a trick. It's a well, ca- capitalism. It's great trick. for me. It's a capitalism awesome. trick to save money. That's capitalism uh, trick. Is that a trick of capitalism. They don't. They don't lose. They don't lower the price. They just change the label to make it look like it's cheaper. So they make it look worse. But damn, keep it this is but like Chapo Trap House. <laughs> but it's still. But it's still. Uh, but it's still like you're still paying too much for it. Damn. Damn. That's tricky, that's, dude. That's how you feel. Now you always four punch lines. I thought uh I thought that was like a comment on uh, I'm, society. I'm going crypto with my jokes. Yeah, I mean it, it feels rock. like it is, but apparently it was literally just kind of a happy accident of like, oh, they that's just all well, they can afford though. and they used to make that and it totally works. This movie does a, is successful 
in terms of it being like um having a lot of like pi- like punk iconography or like mm-hmm. imagery or whatever that's kind of what, what are you doing with your it. hand I'm, well, try, this is my <laughs> mamma mia. Point. yeah he's doing the mamma mia hand <laughs> and then i kiss my fingers i'm like that was, well, that he's was about to taste what he's about to say yeah it's so good i can taste it but uh yeah i don't know it satisfies on that level it gives you what you want yeah the soundtrack movie. i think you know was also like a big yeah, some guy named Iggy Pop did the theme song. Who is this guy? Did he ever <laughs> work again? He's up and he's up and coming. Um, but like all those bands were really like, and all those bands were very LA, you know, like there was like a it was definitely ears on it, the sound here and uh, the the plugs uh, that kind of had that like Tejano sounding punk song in there. Um, yeah. that, I think that was this. The selectors or the specials that was the ska band that came home when he's trying to, to talk the grandma out of the car and they chase him out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Right. That scene was so freaking cool where yeah. he's just like, it looked like, oh, yeah, he, he convinced her. And then just all those dudes come in. That was an actual band? Yeah, that was like an L.A. Oh, ska cool. band. Um, yeah, and then he goes specials. and it's like they just already have it on cinder blocks or like yeah. jacked up. Yeah. So you can't. But how did you not notice that? How did he not notice that? He's new. He's new to the job. He's new to the. He's new to the. It's thing. dark. It's very dark. It's dark. The. I thought he was gonna get away with it though. That would have been sick. I love. Uh, but I, I love. Yeah, stealing an old black like woman's most, car, Ryan. That mm-hmm. would have been sick too. <laughs> if he would have got away with it. I think yeah. like Alex Cox said he wanted Emilio Estevez because he liked him in uh, the Outsiders because he does kind of play like a loudmouth punky sort of greaser in, in the in, you know eating chocolate cake for breakfast and Whoa, stuff like that that is a bad boy that's pretty it's punk a bad rock. Boy. but there's like a shot shit. of him just kind of like laughing and ah and that and uh and it was that weird thing where like i don't know you know i think emilio estevez immediately after that starts to kind of go get like jockier kind of uh more... just think about the mighty ducks well from uh, like breakfast club. breakfast club and then yeah, and then other oh, stuff yeah. like right, there but um mighty ducks yeah, yeah it, it is weird coach that bombay very jockey, coach bombay. Very jockey <laughs> the ultimate even jock. though he's a lawyer <laughs> well he and was then, a jock that'd be you know harry dean though Harley sheen um, honestly would be very good in the movie too yeah yeah because well, yeah um, then yeah. or now they have that energy then, of like, yeah. like uh, charlie sheen and ferris so bueller like he's pretty yeah rebellious um but yeah i True. think emilio estevez is good in this movie i mean look he looks young he yeah but he also looks angry and he also looks like maybe he's not a punk like he, yeah. he's got think, a uh, soft yeah, exterior yeah, between, between worlds like Blade. yeah he, he looks kind of also soft he's in this. he's he knows his friends are dumb like when they're robbing well, you people could... and doing drugs and being and like blaming society and like that one guy duke Who's played by what Richard Rude or something? Uh, yeah, Dick, Dick Rude. Dick he was, Rude. Is he the yeah. is he the dumb one? Like the yeah. shaved head. Yeah. The, he's not he the, dumbest the dumbest one. The dumbest one is the one who's last guys, and dies. What if, his, what if his name was Dick Penis? <laughs> now you owe me a punch. What if? <laughs> that counts as a punch. Um, <laughs> Dick yeah. Rude did a lot of um, stuff in the punk scene too. Like he he was more of like a. I don't know if he was in a band, but he did a lot of. Uh, he's just like a scene guy, and then later he was he did some some writing. I think he wrote on that movie Dudes, which was another punk movie. Oh yeah, dude, that <laughs> movie kicks ass. Awesome. Yeah, with John Cryer. That's, That's a Penelope Spears cool movie, and she directed um, Suburbia. The, yeah, and Decline of Western Civilization, like which was like the right. documentary yes, on yes. that LA, the first LA scene. And then like, she did the Metal Years too, which is hilarious. You know, <laughs> yes um you know i was thinking like also movie, little rascals movie oh also yeah awesome didn't she that do, might be the also, most punk rock also movie punk. yeah oh, wayne's world yeah did she do a, yeah she did Wayne, the first Africa? wayne's world no the first wayne's world she did and then her and mike myers didn't they clashed so he clashes with everybody huh why is it why clash mike come why on clash? yeah You're look more at like what, the love ha- what happened with him well, and here's the thing comedy actors have to <laughs> do true. stupid shit and they don't want to bomb on camera and look like idiots. So they're constantly like, I don't get that. Questioning directors. Like, 
I just had this story about Ben Stiller. He said when he made There's Something Got Mary, he was constantly like worried about setup. And he said, like, why wouldn't I feel the cum on my ear? Like, should we have a scene where I, I, it's revealed my ears have don't have feeling or something? And the director's yeah. like, shut up, dude. What? Just, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's like such a back way to, <laughs> backwards like, way to go about that instead of just idea. like doing it. And that's and like the he most made his iconic own scene out of the whole movie. Yeah, it. so. Um, anyway. But yeah, I think this movie, like, like, it has the thing. I feel like you can tell it's made by like somebody who's actually in punk and been in punk for a long time and stuff by the time they made it because it has that attitude of like punk. The punks are also full of shit. Yeah, totally. You know? So that's that's a key. That's the final solution for being a punk. Oh, calm Not down. Not solution, puzzle piece. We're gonna, for we being gotta a kill punk six million like, punks. Wait. <laughs> yeah exactly that's the final puzzle piece for like being becoming punk you should be like oh wait i this is bullshit too yeah only god is that what you realized punk. when you were 17 years old at the vans warp tour yeah watching some i was like wait a minute these guys everyone here is full of shit oh mike was on the vans warp tour with yeah. some 41 <laughs> dude last time i had a friend Uh-oh. really no, and i, I <laughs> no, i'm not a uh yeah, those guys are kind of but uh, you were on the Vans Warped Tour, yeah? Yeah, we were. Yeah. It's uh it's were full of shit. Into, it is it is a dumb No way, not the Vans Warped Tour. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I remember us, in general. I, it is very I, I cannot tell you how many dumb things uh rules I thought I had to I know. My dude, my friend uh played uh with a band a couple uh, like five years ago, maybe or something like that. And I and I went and he got like me in or whatever, and I went and saw it and uh everybody's walking around with like um monster energy cans like all the musicians yeah, and dude. stuff and yeah. i was like what the fuck? That's i was like warped. everybody's drinking monster energy and he's like no those are water it's but water they just put yeah. them in monster energy cans to make the kids think that like yeah we all drink monster like that's pretty yeah pop. like fucking lying to Marketing sell a man. thing that's not water so to sell it out, like, buying in yeah to ha- raise an entire final... generation of kids to have diabetes yeah look when you, if you want when, drinking when you want a party all you need to do is go to a a parking lot grab your buddy around yep. the neck and just spin around in a circle that's <laughs> yeah. how you fucking party dude that's a real punk rock party that was i i mean i did think that there was some level of that oh that's when you're young enough that it's real exciting that someone scored a 12 pack yeah yeah yeah, it's like yeah. A big and you like deal, and that's like what what you could do um and you we're gonna get drunk for the rest lot. of the summer off of yeah. this <laughs> the um i remember uh, when i was in like sophomore junior year my friends got like a quarter ounce of weed and it just, it just seemed to last so long it, we, we smoked that for weeks it was just like yeah it was just like a month of just pure enlightenment and we just smoked <laughs> endless a summer but yeah um i didn't I, I thought that uh the friend that gets out of jail it sucks i like that character i think like he has a lot of really good lines in the movie, but that guy is just like the only bad actor in the movie. I would say. I disagree. Oh no, yeah, I agree. No, his um, face makes up for his acting. His whole worst... like Dick Rude. That guy's face no, is no. awesome. That's Dick Rude. I thought Dick Rude was the guy with the mohawk who gets killed. No, that was. I hated I the bald guy. Dick Rude's I really the guy didn't. With the bald uh, hair. Okay. The bald okay. hair. I didn't, yeah. his, I didn't like I that he was guy at all. Actor. That yeah. was the I worst actor. actor. That but it awesome. sucks because that because he has a lot of really funny lines like when he's he'll do crimes cheap. and when he yeah. dies that scene that scene should be awesome. He has like he kind of has like his mouth open all the time. He's like yeah, kind of cross eyed. I blame society. Yeah, he yeah, goes. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, he was he was funny, but he went. I mean, the was, line it took the, me out of it. It wasn't on the same level as the other people. I Everything can't tell else you how so many good. times though I've said, "Let's go get sushi and not pay." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the funniest. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Let's go do crimes. That, yeah, and then when they go, yeah, let's go do crimes. And they're like hyping each other up as they walk away to go do crimes. Yeah. Speaking of great, but okay, so the single the greatest they performer do in this murder. movie. <laughs> hold on, the single greatest performer in the entire movie, better than Harry Dean Stanton, of course, is Tracy Walter as, as oh, what yeah. the, what's his fucking name? The Gus? guy with the guy with the glass one glasses. He, no, he's uh, uh the Intel play no, the guy. Shrimp. The, the guy, guy that, that talked like this. Yeah, the guy, the guy from Batman. Miller, Miller, oh, yeah, Miller, Miller, yeah, Bob from Batman. 
Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Tracy oh, Walter yes, is incredible. Who's the, who's the cop with the mustache? You know what's crazy that is that monologue about, uh, you know, what if UFOs are time machines and the, the mm-hmm. lattice of coincidence when somebody yeah. says uh, in front of the plate or can. shrimp or plate of shrimp. Yeah. And all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, that, like that, that monologue, it's like, it's, I don't know why, but it's been, it's in like a bunch of like very like, uh, proper like theater monologue like it's a monologue that people do a bunch cool. and like you can buy like I was in acting school for a while and there was like it would pop up in these like these books of monologues and there's another movie um, it's like a big LA bunch of people it's not hurly burly but it's a movie sort of like that with a whole bunch of actors in it and uh, it's all kind of monologues and randomly one of the characters it's uh, Lisa Marie, that really hot uh, lady that Tim Burton used to date. That was the lady in oh, yeah. uh, Elvis's daughter. She, yeah, uh, no, she, no, the yeah. Hot chick. She's also the hot chick who was nude on the beach with uh, Jeff Goldblum. Yes, oh. not the Beatrix Exchange. Smith. Lisa Marie Smith. Um, she, not the Harry no. Potter one, right? Yeah, the Fight Club one. So. That one. No, no, not not Helena oh, Bonham okay. Carter. Uh, this, and also, uh, Tim Burton has dumped her and moved on with Eva Green. So this guy, Tim is Burton, is that what he under- did? Oh yeah, that's kind of tight. Who's who's Eva Green? Does she look absolutely? She's warped? in the dreamer. She's in the dr- look up Eva Green, the dreamers. <clears throat> Nude. Oh yeah, check that out. You'll get it. You'll you'll understand. Save yeah. search on her. Own. You'll, you'll be like, oh yeah, I would immediately. She's in uh, one of those Sin City movies. Too. What about what about um, Lisa Marie? Oh yeah, talking about well, yeah, no. There's a movie where she delivers the lattice of coincidence, plate of shrimp, shrimp plate monologue in a car, where she's like, "I'm gonna practice my monologue," and she just does the whole monologue. And I, it's just that you know, there's so many little pieces of that movie that have like trickled out to pop culture. Like I, I don't think that 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 monologue being in those like monologue books that I read, like it wasn't. These weren't like cool. It'd be like right there with like something from our town, but that monologue is weirdly taking off a life of its own in in theater sort of situations. I know, and that's a shame because the real monologue that should be performed from this movie is John Wayne's a fag. Yeah, <laughs> that was the best. That's like the- <laughs> that's the scene all the theater kids should be performing. Yeah, you I mean, isn't that, that, that the most? Isn't that like the most? Week. Isn't that the most famous like quote from this movie? No, the yeah, most famous quote is ordinary oh. fucking people or something like that. Yeah. What uh, was that? Repo man, Repo man lives, Repo man's life is intense. Uh, something about. Most people run away from well, yeah. intense, intense situations. Yeah. What was. Run. But I love, yeah, now it's the one about like, driving. The more you drive, the dumber you dumber are. You the get. more you drive, the less intelligent. Yeah, Miller says you that. Get. He does. Oh, all the, all the Repo men are named after uh, beers. Oh, oh really? Uh, Miller, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's tight. They're beer. Like, okay, I'm I'm on board now. The, One's um, just I like twisted I like tea. beer. Yeah, like I think Miller is kind of the only pure soul in in the whole movie. Like he's the only, <laughs> and he's the smartest while also the most ding batty. That's whatever. why he, he could be an the, alien. That's why he's in the car. Yeah. This car, I think, should be a more iconic. No. Image in punk, the glowing flying car. This car is amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. The Chevy uh, Malibu uh, should be a punk rock icon. Well, like the glowing in the air, glowing green. I don't know. I would take a, I would take a glowing green Chevy Malibu. I would like to get my ride pimped. Like Cars should just glow in the dark. I'm surprised they don't do this. They put lights yeah. on them. No, I'm like, saying let's have it some should glowing be like, cars. It, it should be more of a. I don't know. Do you ever have you ever seen like a band use it should that be a tattoo. imagery or anything? No, I haven't actually. That's that. Yeah, that would be that would be a cool tattoo. Yeah, let's yeah, look this up. Let's man. see how many uh, tattoos. Give me. Come on. It shouldn't be. I shouldn't have to twist your arms on this one. Oh wow! Look, hundreds of photos. I'm finding t-shirts. Oh. <laughs> merchandise, mugs, garbage. Oh. I see. Another of Adam's brilliant ideas that is completely <laughs> popular. Exists. It almost proves that I'm that I, the idea was good. You know, well, it's just obvious. You're like, 40 if you years thought late, of it, though, trust me, a million things. other people did too. What if we one took day, you know, those loaves of day. bread? What if we what if we cut like little chunks out of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and made sandwiches. Sandwiches. 
<laughs> the fuck? <laughs> you okay? Well, we haven't invented the sandwich yet. In this <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's the, fir- the guy first <laughs> pitches I want, I, it is called being called a sandwich. Before I forget, before I forget, I want to talk about how this dude got laid for the first time with that girl. Um, yeah. From the back seat when, of the car, like that's a clock or just the, reference. The way it speeds the up. The dialogue, no, the dialogue leading up to it is, God, I almost need to look it up. Um, oh, I, she's like, so what is this? And he's like, what? What is what? And she's like, our relationship. And he goes, fuck that. Oh yeah, no, he, when <laughs> he's, he's about to. Says. He's about to get in the car. Was, he, the guy, the, tra- oh, uh, right. the the crazy guy is like get the get the one getting in the glowing car. He's everyone else is just like around. Oh, that is at the shit. end of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what did he? He said something he's right like, before. He, you the, know, he called her like a dickhead or like something, car, and then yeah. she's like, "Let's go, fuck." Well, like, he's like, he's like, "You want to get in the car with me?" She's like, "Okay." Yeah, but after they were, it was like totally rude to her. It's very punk rock. <laughs> it's very yeah. It was that's how they did it in the eighties. Um. I texted you guys a cool link. Yeah, I'm not going cool. to it. It's not cool. It's... I looked at it. It's terrible. He just sent some garbage. Um, so let me I'm ask you guys a question. It. Okay. Do you like to watch your friends fuck? <laughs> oh, my God. It's the only way I can get off. And it, they got to be fucking my wife, though. I've only Adam has seen it good friends. once. Adam has a two-way mirror, but it's for his bathroom door so he can see. Wait, it. Mike, you have seen it? Yeah, I've seen. Like it you walked in it. on it, or you know, it was dorm uh, it was, room situation. It was, yeah, well, it's happening in a in a a room that a bunch of punks were staying in. Oh, Typical nice. punk I, night. I bet that room smelled so bad. Yeah, I, I always smell crazy in there. It wasn't good. It was just one dude and one gross girl. What did he sound like when he climaxed? <gasps> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh ha. shit! Just one, <laughs> just one hard, one hard ha. Huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know the only <laughs> the, the guy that I my one of my favorite guys in this movie is uh is is Cy Richardson uh the guy that talks about the book, book diuretics that and I love like the the yeah, he's dianetic, cool. that but he's really great in it too where he's kind of like. Uh, well, there's a like really the fun- yin to Bud's yang yes. a little bit. The black, Bud yeah, the black things- repo man is like a, in, a Scientologist. He's into yes. dynamics. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And also, That's he awesome. um, Harry Dean Stanton says like, "We'll never, I'll never touch any items in the car." And then, oh yeah, Cy Richardson is just like throwing shit out the window. Yeah, that giant stack of like money. A, just a of money stack of money in a. Yeah. Bre- and Emil- Emilio Estevez at one point throws a Jesus statue out of the window yeah. as soon as he steals an old Latino man's car. Yeah, um, that that part's that part's cool. When they, uh, they shoot the gunfight is awesome with that like yeah. power station in the background or whatever, like that chemical plant or whatever, like oil refinery. Mm-hmm. There's just like really awesome industrial like it just makes LA look like a wasteland. Yeah. I thought, well, yeah, it's, yeah. Is it supposed to be, it, it's, it's, is it not like, is it supposed to be futuristic? Like not post-apocalyptic, but like a dystopian? No, the, dude, the dystopia is now. Yes. Dystopia is yeah. now. It's supposed to be dystopian or, and it's supposed to be futuristic. Okay, okay. Like they have, Orwell. Did she have, did she, was that an actual robot hand? Was that, that one, the silver handed lady? Was yeah. that supposed to actually be a robot hand? Yeah. That's I mean, an obviously actual it looked like metallic a hand. glove. She and really got that put on for the, for the role she cut her hand oh, off she cut her hand off damn i wanted more have, of like, that i wanted more radioactive guys radioactive suits mm-hmm. the hazmat Remember? suits yeah and they're in like skid row and they're like so it's well they were investigating <laughs> nuclear leakage it's about like the car reagan's america man it's like yeah. it's deep bro deep trickle down economics doesn't work yeah the um it worked uh, in this movie. The dude flew away in a goddamn car. Time traveled. That was real too. Um, the Eesh. the movie, uh, kind of crazy thing. Uh, one of the producers on this movie was uh, one of the, the monkeys. monkeys. Yeah, yeah Mike Mike oh yeah, that's cool. Is that the good which, one? Which one? He's, he's the one whose mom was defended cold. white out. Yeah, he was super rich because his mom like even free monkeys because his mom invented whiteout um, the monkeys Dang, I, used to sniff that. Which monkey I used to is... sniff all so much them. whiteout all, all of the monkeys are good. are good yes they just monkey around bro yeah that's, well, pe- that's what people say 
they're too busy singing to bring anybody so. down. I think the monkeys um, made an amazing movie called Head, written by Jack Nicholson. Go that, on. That's um, <laughs> very psychedelic. It's R rated. It begins with the and... four monkeys committing suicide. Um, oh. It was a complete and total bomb. But the monkeys are totally awesome. Like when they started writing their own music and playing their own music, they lost all their popularity yeah because the, the fans hated them because like they were even like more you know they didn't have like the beatles could be like sweet and sour whereas the monkeys just immediately did you cool. like sourness. super weird yeah more they, tv they were writing yeah. weird psychedelic yeah. songs that didn't necessarily have hooks and yeah the the movie head is just kind of this there's not it's sort of plotless but the 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 message overall is like we hate that we've been commodified by yeah. this, uh, by the studio. It's kind of like a Monty Python movie. Yeah. It's really, really odd. Maybe I should watch it. It's worth watching. It's for sure. I'll, least, I'll at least I've watch the seen intro. It. You said you the did, monkeys William? killed themselves? Yeah. In the beginning of the movie, DVD. yeah. Yeah, I'll watch that part. It's in the Criterion Collection, bro. Beach, Beach Boys Whoa. are bust. That's what I say. It's Fuck from the, the Beatles. S- Fuck the monkeys. Beach what about Boys, Rolling right? Stones, right. Bust. Settle Settle Rolling Stones can keep on rolling, my guys. What's your favorite Beach Boys album? Because <laughs> I'm parked up at the Beach Boys. The greatest your... hits. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> what if you're like, fuck Pet you Sounds, bro. Pet Sounds hits. sucks. What is, what's what's Dude, this sounds. album is fucking I'm awesome. <laughs> Every song is so good. The, um, the Mighty Ducks. Smile. Um, the song that they have on the Mighty Ducks. Yeah. Oh, I'm I thinking. thinking of it, oh, I was thinking it would be funny if instead of Repo Man, it was called Rapo Man, and um, Emilio Estevez had a rape. He's got a job raping. They didn't pay their bills. Yeah, yeah. and he's Old like, I ain't, I ain't gonna stuff. be, I ain't gonna be a Rapo Man. You guys you're, are the scum of society. You are. There, there's money in it. I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> yeah. It's That's twenty-five kind of bucks like, a car. How does it work? This is kind of this is another example of the thing that my wife is mad at me for. Uh, Are you joking? Doing on this our movie? <laughs> no, the, Adam's wife called us said. losers for doing Why? this, Mike. Making rape jokes. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Uh, she doesn't. She's people are it's fucking. It's, it's lost its charm to her. Here's we told, a, you, to, here's we the told thing. you to divorce your wife last week. I know. Would she rather um, have you doing jokes about it or? you know acting on it because yeah, there's on only it. there's only one of those two. there's only yeah. one of those two it's, it's, one, it's either it's a choice you have to make commit or tell a joke <laughs> and there's no <laughs> in between commit or do. i gotta I, do I remember one. a time when some people do both. i got your wife and all her and her those friend are, chanting rape the sluts at a party <laughs> They like rape jokes. They just don't want to. They just pretend they don't in public. Well, how did you get everyone chanting rape? They're watching Bring It On, (laughs) the movie Bring It On. (laughs) It happened. (laughs) My favorite scene in that movie. Yeah, I got to. I'll bring that up. Bring it on. The the rape chant. I mean, they're asking for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that means. That title. I mean, they're um, literally bring it on stuff, guys. Good stuff. Yeah. Maybe maybe your wife's right. If there's consent, it's not rape. (laughs) Ah. I don't know how well I, this movie did okay, I guess, when it came out, but it's definitely like the cult home video, man. It was one of yeah. those videos everybody had. I remember it so- seeing it in Blockbuster. I never saw it. I never rented it, right, but cool. I was like, what's the deal with this? We had a, <laughs> I didn't know it was a punk movie, honestly. Well, we had a really cool, oh, like man. the mom and pop video You're store. You're a real punk up. rocker, Adam. Yeah, no. I was we a had a cult classic section. And I think this was like one of the first, like, I mean, I was, in like late grade school or early early junior high and like got this because it looked kind of cool and punk on the cover and i was trying to figure out what all that was and that and then immediately like i rented everything on that cult classic section and this was kind of like this movie was kind of like um forbidden zone uh oh yeah what else was i'm trying to think like definitely like was on there um i remember seeing zomb the uh, zombie flesh eaters po- uh, box art or did you rent it too. no 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 oh cool. <laughs> so. adam um, just went to movies i rented and like at what three did you rent some shit i rented three like, amigos three, yeah no i had that tape, <laughs> taped actually you know i rented the the, the newest adam sandler movie <laughs> that kind of thing 
but like they, I remember like European they had like people. Quiet Earth it was a real uh, interesting Australian yes, yes. Quiet Earth? low budget uh, a quiet the Quiet classic. Earth. Um, I'm just trying to think of like the box it, art on the shelf. The box, okay, well, think and tell us the titles <laughs> you think of. There was a, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, Eraserhead. Was, Eraserhead for sure was there. Um, I've never finished that movie. I've never been able to get through it. There well, was makes you want to. Have very entertaining. I don't know how you couldn't finish it. It's a great story. It just once it gets going, man. A cure. No, that's probably not in cult. Is that in, is that's Akira an adult cult? Akira was an adult animation. You know, eighties cult movies. Um, Night of the Comet. That's Night of the one. Comet for sure. Uh, Which what is the one the about cast? the glowing Never thing that comes down to Earth and the the covers? He's very like it's like a drawing of two punk chicks, but there's not really that many punk people in it. What is it? Uh, glowing light. It's on Night of the Comet. Alien or something. Not Night of the Comet. It's like really low budget and really. Oh, Liquid Sky. Liquid Sky. That's it. Liquid Sky. Uh, that's, a little, that's a little. That's a little more extreme. It's not really punk. It's like '80s club gay. Yeah. Cra- the like, cover made it look very punk. Punk, but the box Liquid cover, Guy. They're just Liquid on hair. It's just like this is the guy from the mystery. The guy covered in semen. <laughs> liquid liquid guy would be great and yeah it's just liquid it's guy. like a cum guy he's just a guy made out of cum guy. Hovered, yeah. in, <laughs> hovered in just a glob of cum you don't liquid. yeah you don't solve who did it but you do you realize at the end that it was cum the whole um, time yeah. that you've been like but well, like, you know like touching the and, detective like, <laughs> detective's yeah. licking it and he's like this isn't like any any cocaine i've tasted yeah and he, and he kind of just takes another he's, like, scoop it of it <laughs> he's scooping it like it's a fresh no, it's not river coke. water and mouth is pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> um, trying to think of other punk movies. Uh, SLC punk is like that yeah, that's the only one I can remember. That's Adam level punk movie. That's, yeah, that's like <laughs> I liked it. I re- I remember watching that in high school and being like, "This is what fucking movies are, dude. This is hits yeah, hard, yeah. bro." But My I was like, yeah, I would say most movies get it wrong. You know, it's very uh, chips. Uh, the the band Pain in the movie Chips or the TV the, show Chips. Oh, I there's thought you were going to talk about the movie adaptation of the show. Oh Chips no, no, there's a, there's a, there's like a lot of it's like, like we're I, I'm sort of a, there's, I've got this book uh, called Destroy good one. All Movies uh, that That's Destroy cool. All Movies kind yeah. of um, it's this okay it's we get it you live in Austin history yeah. of every punk, <laughs> punk uh, like scene that's in a movie back then. There's some like class of Quincy. Oh, Quincy, class 1984. Yeah, yeah class the Quincy has the party scene where he's like, "The girl died of a codeine overdose." And it's like, yeah, Valley yeah, Girls, Quincy, kind of a punk movie. The one on Chips, um, uh, it's a no, band it's called Pain, yeah. and they sing a song called "I Dig Pain." And the singer, the lead singer, it's William Forsyth with a mohawk, and uh, it's he's, pretty. Uh, one of his first roles, I think. He's in Raising Arizona with John Goodman. He's one of yeah. You know, listening to you two talk about how many movies face. you watched as a, um, a kid, there's not a punk movie. I've never seen a punk movie where um, punks watch a lot of movies. That's not a very punk thing to do. That would be a cool. You guys, you guys are dorks. There's a great uh, movie called Let's Go Crazy with... Um, and I, I'm sorry, did I just call two punks that's dorks? That's an interesting... The singer uh, no, of the X. Punk, bro. No, that's, or, that's no the big... singer of Fear is in it. And then... Um, that's pretty the shocking. Singer Fear is also in um Clue. 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 Yes. I met the I've met this guy. Leaving. Leaving, yeah. yeah. His um, name is Leaving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. Yeah. It's very confusing. A lot of who's on first kind of. Uh, <laughs> okay. The Fabulous Stains. I don't think that Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the Fabulous the Stains. Stains. What about and Streets there's, of there's Fire? There's a really cool Streets of Fire is called Times Square. Oh, it's I've just called Times Time Square. Times Square is great. New York movie. Um, about two girls who run away yeah, live suburbia. in Times Square. I used to watch that as a kid too. Like a Ice lot of World? these movies in the eighties, it took a while before <laughs> Spice World is pretty tight, but it's um, punk, bro. There's that's kind of like Josie and the Pussycats is better. Now that's a monkey's kind of that's head, that's like head is. <laughs> yes, the Spice Girls rejecting Spice Imagine. World is their 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 head their homogenization these thoughts. The uh, in the eighties, like. They didn't have a lot of kids videos for a while. It took a while before that became like a fucking industry. Like mm-hmm. that really started in like 1990. But like Disney would kind of dole out their movies. So as a kid, yeah, I would rent 
Repo Man, Dudes, you know, all these, all these like wacky R-rated independent films. Like most of video stores in the eighties were filled with independent films because the studios were really slow to release their catalog because they thought they were going to lose money. But these indie guys, they could make like so much more money selling videotapes. So it was like an awesome period, like up until 1990 when they didn't catch up. The, the big guys didn't catch up you're saying the big guys didn't catch up and like when you went to a video store yeah it was fucking eraser head zombie flesh eaters repo man and then like of course all the action movies you know schwarzenegger and shit but yeah i mean all the all the studio stuff would they would take like sometimes a year after theatrical run was done they would take a year to a year and a half if not longer sometimes to and kind of really try and re re break the movie as this big deal that they're putting it out on on video now, as opposed to right. now, like you get it like a new know. trailer. They'd cut a new trailer yeah, and everything yeah, that yeah. exposed a lot more of the. E. T. took almost ten years like to come genitals. out on VHS. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So they, I didn't see yeah, E. T. Disney until I was like, six, well, the, it's because the government didn't want to want us to know about aliens, bro. Yeah. Well, that's I, why Repo Man told the truth. Mm. Yeah. Do y'all do y'all know anybody yeah. that used to, that ever was a repo person? Yes, my cousin. Same. <clears throat> he, Same. he has a tow truck. Your cousin. How did I know it was going to be one of your relatives? Like this is yeah. Like... My brother went because on a ride along all, with them. Adam's family is a fam is a family of uh, they all make their money like scamming old people or like taking money from old people. That's exclusively right. what Adam uh, Williams' family does. Oh yeah, 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 you said my family first. Great. Yeah, it yeah, does. yeah, yeah. Set- now you owe me a setup because that one was bungled. <laughs> William. It does seem like bungle. No, is, that, uh, is that today's like wordle? The, what, what the fuck did you say? I was listening to Mr. Brung- Mr. Bungle comedy earlier. Taskmaster, William. It does seem like there's no fun in uh, repo manning now. Like it's just rolling up with a truck, and <clears> well, it's all online. It, it, that's why my friend quit. That's the technology it. rolling. It's all, it's all virtual. Game. Yeah. Just send a smart car to drive itself over there, and yeah, the Tesla just drives its way home. Did you ever I, see? Did you ever watch that show? Uh, with the crazy repo lady. She's huge, big old, like seven foot tall lady that would real. Um, oh yeah, oh, it's like hard, a dog it's hard your mom, kind of right, thing. Ryan? <laughs> yeah, and she just and she just repoed everybody's wieners into her mouth. Oh, I think that was just. Uh... <laughs> that was, you were just watching the okay, WNBA. Hey, you owe me a debt on that dingus. And then just uh, 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 grapefruits his ass. I don't think you, you your bring mom it up, but repo, repo is a Brian. there is a great porn category of repo where the guy is like mm. they have I to, gotta take your car uh, back. I don't got uh, money, but the repo I got, man. The fantasy where you're home. you're fucking a hot lady, but and you're also a repo man. That's, <laughs> That's the ultimate, dude. A bad businessman. And then you poke <laughs> yeah. you poke him and then you just still take the car. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's punk. Do we know somebody in town who is a repo man, Ryan? I'm trying to remember. I feel like I. God, I hope not. Somebody in the. They'd be taking all my stuff. Ryan, this, you will do this at some point. Well, Joe life. Rogan. No, He's I'll just a steal a repo, repo business in Austin. Joe Rogan. Yeah. <laughs> Rogan's repos. Yeah. Rogan's repos. <laughs> you just see an alpha brain uh, tow truck coming toward down the street, and everybody's just fuck. God. Um. What a shitty job that would be. To be Joe yeah, Rogan? It would suck to be like, I mean, guys who are, drive tow trucks, that's kind of what that is. Like, yeah. You, you were saying that earlier, I guess, Mike. Yeah. Like, it yeah, is they're sharks. Much, you know, they, and like, a lot of likes them, them. Like sure. people who park illegally and then they just tell them and like, and there's, uh, you have to I, pay I, like I've, hundreds of dollars to get your car out. Yeah. yeah oh, I've done, I've done that like 20 times. And when I lived in Koreatown, I got towed. Literally, I probably, I think I did the math and it was like $7,200 over five years that I spent in getting my um, car out of. Yeah. Mr. Responsible Ryan. (sighs) You did. Yeah. You're killing it, dude. We should tell Um, the tow trucks and repo the repo trucks. Right, guys? I tried. Yeah. Who repos the repo? Did you ever ever get your car as they were jacking it up? Have you ever, did you ever roll up to your car? No. One time I caught a guy and he was rolling up and Whoa. I was, I was able to pay him some cash 
to put it down and it was the most frustrating i was so mad but you you, you know completely as the power. it's like rubbery dude you just but got robbed i've heard and i don't know if it's true that you can jump in your car and they can't they can't leave with you in your yeah. car but because they, they can't can, drive yeah but you could get the cops involved though they have the yeah. right to take your car legally so they'll do it they'll figure out how to do it yeah but I'm you sure might as well make it as annoying as possible yeah. they can't take yeah, your car annoying. also Slash also i've never i've never Slash walked tires, up. i can't tell you they can mm. and i've never walked i've never caught them like i've never caught a, a repo person jacking up my car but i have caught them jacking off by off. my car yeah 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 Yeah, i walked by and they were just into the gas tank and it was a john, picture you got a hot you. car dude. john wayne's into that yeah there was, uh, he was, was this guy was wearing a lot of fringe Tassels. I wanted to. It was just the ultimate cum tribute to jack off <laughs> on someone's car. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was in the gas tank, and I mean, with gas the prices these compliment. days, I'll try anything. You know, yeah. someone. That's true, dude. If you just if you're like in holy hell, and you see like a Maserati, gonna, what else am I gonna yeah. do with all this cum I got? You, what if, if you, you get like, like a brand new car, five hundred feet with a load. no, you buy like a brand new Maserati and you just like park it around town, and every time you come back to your car, there's just like, like fucking cum splatter on the hood and you're just like what the hell and like all these guys are like beautiful car around. man beautiful <laughs> Real beautiful beautiful from uh <laughs> like, fuck why did i get this from now on one? whenever i walk back to my car and i see like bird shit on it i'm gonna make a public scene and be like who the fuck came on my car <laughs> who came there's some people walking by did you come on my car there's come right here and there's a little purple on, on it just if i come you got purple hang. come your pants are like halfway zipped and there's like come <laughs> dribbling out of the front of your pants little, just like, a little purple cum dribbling who did this huh <laughs> i'm a victim here i want attention i'm going we all want to know who come who came who on, come my it on my car come forth no 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 bad choice of words the, um, how about those rodriguez brothers huh yeah a little, e- rodriguez. A little east la f- who are these oh, Rodriguez? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Who spice. were these uh, Rodriguez boys? No, Rodriguez brothers. Boys. No, brothers. <laughs> Who were they? And why were they also on the river at the same exact time? Look, that's out. That's and downtown. Been, There's like a ton of vatos and shit down there. Yeah, you got to have that. There wasn't a ton. There was two, and they were brothers. The, uh, Dude, do you see their grandma? They live in like a downtown loft, which I thought was very funny. They should definitely be in like a little house, like. Well, in Boyle, Boyle Heights. Heights, yes, literally, uh, five feet away from where they actually live. The uh, the bad guys to on the same team journey was super fun with them, and uh, yeah. the way it all the 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 whole back and forth between people flipping on each other was classic noir and but so fun. It's just it's just well, so the thing about also this movie treated it like a gang. They were like cop. Yeah. They're like detectives. Yes. It felt like they were detectives at one point, but then also there's like a gang within the repo men. Uh, there's like territory within yeah. the repo world, and then they're also not detect. Like they're not. They're not any of that. They're just repo men. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're taking their job. They're just taking is, their job so serious. The tone is perfect. That is the tr- mm-hmm. like the thing. The truly great thing about this movie is the tone, and it's like. You like Otto. You care for Otto. There's no real stakes for Otto. What he's gonna get the Chevy Malibu that's worth twenty. Oh, he might get. He might get shot. You're just hanging out with the dude. Yeah. And I love that about the screenplay. That like, yeah, Otto gets a girlfriend at the end of the movie. He tells her to like. She's like, what about a relationship? She's like, fuck also, that. You know, like, also, I like that. Yes, obviously that. You get in the radioactive car and fly away. Like, you obviously take that decision. You're not like no. It's kind of like Close Encounters. I just realized yeah yeah <laughs> but um it's so cool that it doesn't have all this like dramatic screenwriting bullshit stuff to like get you yeah. into to make you care because half the time you watch movies like that and you're just like oh that's a thing that's gonna come up yeah. later or like yeah, oh he's no... gonna re is Otto gonna reconnect with his friends or his girlfriend like who cares like i love the uh it's, it just keeps moving forward oh, it's like a fun that's... nihilism and that's like yeah. a um that's and the, the I, I think way. like part of the dialogue why it crackles is this these weird, you know, like catch twenty two like nonsense. But maybe it means something. But it all like very my, satirical. I, I love the part of um, where they're <laughs> auto auto gets beat up and they're gonna beat him up unless <laughs> unless the repo men are gonna beat him up unless he tells them who beat him up. Yeah, because 
yes. they have to go beat the person up that told them. So it, and then it, he it tells it, a lie, yeah. and it's the it's the it's the guy at this the supermarket guy that we've already kind yeah. of forgotten about by this point. But they show up and beat him up, and if you can see in the back of the shot for whatever reason his uh xander schloss his buddy is in the back like you can just see him kind of in the background so like maybe that guy's fucking him or he's gone back to work at the at the at the <laughs> supermarket or something it's just kind of in the background oh, but weird. it's just all those little like little little they pay attention easter egg little easter egg that i'm some of the joke like I, one of my favorite jokes is uh when he picks up the chair and he's gonna throw it on the guy and the, guy, the guy's like oh, no yeah, my yeah. eyes my eyes my eyes and he throws it down and then you hear my eyes not my face not my face not my face bam so hard my face at that. It's their, fun. i laughed so hard at that shit it, there were so I'm, many moments where it yeah. felt very hot shotsy yeah. Or like very yeah. naked gunny, like when they're driving down the street and just talk and the whole conversation they're having is just cartoonish. These nonsense, you know, and I, I like, logic like yeah. Loops, yeah. these weird little logic loops. Like this movie's a part, satire, right? I, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of fucking. Yeah, it's it's a weird it's weird that it is like that because it doesn't necessarily like come from. It's so casual. Shit. Yeah, it's, a, it's know, your this microphone is way off. No one can hear you. Oh, really? such a blender of of okay. styles where like we're gonna it's a it's a punk rock noir western comedy action movie science uh, fiction sci-fi yeah. sci-fi love, yeah dystopia yeah I adam love... hold on hold on we can hear you so <laughs> <laughs> you fuck um uh i love the, I love the one of the <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, you gotta do I is laugh. This, I love this guy. <laughs> um, uh, he's like a I big baby. The... <laughs> not forget what I was gonna say. Somebody, somebody, jangle some keys up to the mic. I liked the part where the, his friend from the grocery store, you know, when he's dead and he's walking through the hospital. <laughs> Otto's walking through the hospital. <laughs> and he like yeah, he's under up, the gurney. Like, we Otto. talked about that. Oh, you did. Yeah, like that's one of the first things we talked about. But that's a great scene. Go on. Well, it's just like an interesting touch. <laughs> <laughs> I never mind. I don't need to. How say did that. you not like, know he was going to do that, Adam? I'm good. I'm done. I was just really into making the point that I wanted to make. You related to that character, right, Adam? Oh, I did not see this coming though. When I saw this character and saw how he was treated in the movie, I did not realize that William. Well, he enough. just looked like you. <laughs> don't look like that guy that guy's a nerd i'm cool just for the listeners <laughs> just for the listeners i look like emilio or you know other people like that Go yeah on, he got you got some estevez in you see yeah machine. no he's more of a sheen yeah he's more of a sheen <laughs> <laughs> he's got a little more well, sheen. i thought that guy I, was tall so maybe you're related to him because you're tall that's why you thought that yeah Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, re I, re I relate. I relate to don't the. Don't do this in front of Mike, dude. Not in front of Mike, please. <laughs> be funny. Sorry, Mike. It's okay. We're trying to be stupid. Not in front of Mike. Not in front of Mike. He gets it. Uh, He's laughing. It was. It was that. Well, that's like a. I was gonna say that's like a thing about. I feel like the dead friend character, like dead, like ghosts, seeing like somebody you know that's dead alive is like a thing that's in other punk movies too like slc punk yeah like that that's one the plot well, of that's SLC like punk. taken from that two what's up slc punk yeah, yeah, two yeah, is exactly. about bob heroin exactly. bob coming back like to the dead how yeah. bad is that movie <laughs> what they, they made, made a, sec they made a sequel <laughs> oh return to the living dead one of the great punk films yeah oh, come on it's just an interesting i like it. the, the uh, green room green, green room, room is has all the, has all the zombies that, but that movie sucks there's William zombies doesn't, in William the green room? Like no, a movie below. Well, <laughs> the lead character. <laughs> Ooh. Damn, it's dude. the show, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the idea. Um, and I did like, God damn, that scene again at the end where he just tells her to fuck off. She's like, what about a relationship? And he's like, fuck no. If he would have yeah, gone okay. into it, like imagine like two years into that relationship when they're fighting. 
And he's like, I should have fucking gotten that glowing ass car. Yeah. Like I should have gotten the glowing ass car. He's like yelling at him. He's like, my mom was right. I should have, I should have left with the car. What about if he got in the car and he brought the girl with him and then they all had a fun ride together? She couldn't. Everyone, everyone, everyone else blew up when they tried to touch it. It was only the two repo mang that could do it. Mang. That's also what the the Hispanic brothers should have been called. The repo mang. They should remake this movie, re- but re- about re- they should remake Man this gang. movie, but about the ska kids. You know, Absolutely like not, that. dude. Like yeah. third wave ska. You get such a headache watching it, all that checkered pattern for ninety minutes. Just yeah. checkered yeah, pattern. Yeah, he definitely wouldn't wouldn't have poured that beer out. He would have just not even opened it. It's like yeah, yeah. like I'm straight at. <laughs> it would have been like, like a fango. <laughs> well, ICP Repo Man. Now that's an interesting Ooh. film. A juggalo Ooh. stealing bowling shoes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or oh, I was I was combining uh, juggalo and ska. Yeah. Or if it was re- re- that's Punkers. a music genre. What if it was Repo Man? That's a fan base. <laughs> There's got to be a juggalo. Repo 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 Man. Is there a juggalo ska band? There has to be one. And if not. All here's the thing. Money all, to be made. all yeah, that crossover. Okay, here's all ska. Well, all like ska, ska bands are clowns. All ska bands are clowns already. That's it. Not the Aquabats. <laughs> clowns. <laughs> do they do ska? Cool. What about real here, big right? fish? Real? Do they do ska? What about safe Come on, bro. Do they do ska? Come on, bro. Do you even clowns. ska, bro? Look, obviously clowns, we bro. all secretly okay. listen I to ska. Scat. We all obviously secretly like ska and listen to it, but we don't want to admit it publicly. <laughs> if you if you like hey, ska, you know you exclusively song... pre prematurely ejected. <laughs> <laughs> exclusively. Like, exclusively. What second ska, wave ska? ska is one letter short for the ska. numbers for ska fans ska. are very very like under inflated. Second wave ska, I don't know. Uh, is that operation Fishbone? Ivy, or is that first wave ska? I think Mike. that's second. <laughs> Mike. I think that's second. I think third would be like this: your saved Ferrises and your right. uh, real big fishes. Real big fish. I don't know though. I'm not RBF. You you RBF guy? Uh, man, no, I've got I've got RBF and. Uh... <laughs> so what do we learn? What's the message? Well, like weird, weird, What's the bro? big yeah. takeaway of this movie? What do you learn? Oh Just, my God! Get in the glowing take, car. Take speed. That's what take I want to do. Take speed. A good repo take, man uses take speed. speed and steal cars at like three in the morning, four in the morning. So you know, Harry Dean Stanton in this movie. About like five years after this movie, he started dating Jennifer Connelly. So if you look up Harry Ooh. Dean Stanton, Jennifer Connelly, there's all these photos of him like 55 years old, wearing like a cheap suit with like a giant 100 cigarette hanging out of his mouth, and then like. 19 year old voluptuous Jennifer Connolly. Jesus Christ. At That's like movie G. premieres. So, this wow, dude... yeah, I'm looking at it. Like, she, she's fr- she looks like she did in the uh, legend or no, not legend. Uh, career, career opportunities. The first call. I am yeah. legend. Oh, the hot that spot. Was Will Smith, bro. I was thinking of the David Bowie movie. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Oh Harry Dean Stanton. God. He's like just plowing away. Jesus Christ. She yeah, loves He's him. not a. He's not a part of that United so, Fruit Cake hey, outlet. Fruit Cake outlet. Dude's man. legend. Outfit. <laughs> this movie what made was, me yeah, want to do speed. Was, oh, absolutely, lie. dude. I'd love to just stay up for three days driving around downtown LA, stealing cars. Stealing cars That's for 25 kind of bucks a pop. Or I guess it was like a 25% commission. Mm-hmm. This, did, this oh. truly did make me hate um, where we are at in society. They didn't have cell phones like you could you could live a life like that you could literally be a local grifter and just like get a job as a repo man cash money 25 bucks and then you could survive this you is could have a documentary ryan ryan you're turning into a punk right it now. was a documentary and i think i'm this gonna an absurd film you're getting punk you're this getting movie is by the deep second. dude this movie is serious and i think the moral of it is um just dress more like a square and you can get away with and be white and you can get a lot away with a lot more. Yeah. Just be a white guy. <laughs> I do think that, um, why it's, it's crazy that he didn't like this. Did he, 
did he come around to this movie, Harry Dean, afterwards? Because it's yeah. so, it's one of his defining things, really. Did that he just not? Mike? He just didn't like filming it, or like he was just being a diva. No, he didn't. He didn't respect the director or whatever, and just thought he had. Yeah, but do, the po- But once it was all done and out and everything. Oh yeah, did he? That shitty. He's kind of a too. moron, Harry Dean Stanton. I mean, he's awesome. I love him, but like, he After has so many stupid. insane stories of like him forgetting his lines, forgetting people, like being. But like everybody loved him. Like he's so good. It's just like mm-hmm. he's not like a fucking serious actor guy. He's just a weird, interesting person who was a great character actor. So. Mm-hmm. He just has a lot of like weird. Mm -hmm. Eason. Yeah, he was a super weird. Eccentric, eccentric, uh, you know, kind of that throwback from doing, you know, he was doing stuff with like Paul Newman and back in the day. So he kind of was a hold of holdover from doing. Yeah, he's honestly like a Leonardo DiCaprio and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood kind of guy. Like he was a 60s cowboy guy who probably thought he was gonna make westerns and the next thing you know that's over and he's like yeah well, what do i he's do doing these weird indie movies yeah that, those that the freaky but young people are making jesus christ dating a 20 year old jennifer connelly <laughs> when you're he had to he had to show the, the young people who the real freak oh God, was. that's crazy he probably just kept forgetting her age <laughs> <laughs> when he was he didn't learn her age. he didn't he probably learning her age. he's like no she's 45 50 yeah i was like bro she's she just graduated high school. She he probably was, covered her in cum. She was times. 19 and he was 64. <laughs> That's the perfect Dang, That's important. the perfect <laughs> relationship number. Um, I guess if you're a dummy. Gap. Yeah, that'll wow. work perfectly with the and me, you know. So when I'm 64, <laughs> I will be don't, 19. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say, that. Don't um, say his name. Yeah. <laughs> and don't say you're going to fucking keep Adam's son's <laughs> name Harry out your really. fucking <laughs> mouth, bro. Keep Adam's son. Yeah, for, dude, if the, if the Oscars were over when he's 19, year, Adam, it'll be okay. Done shit. When he's 19, it's his choice. <laughs> you keep saying this. <laughs> no. I will not it's... approve ever. You understand? I don't care how old he is. Oh. Uh, but for real, wow, Adam's William, homophobic. Mike to, Mike, to catch you up, William's been, um, I wouldn't even say threatening, it's more of a promise type situation, uh, to marry Adam's son when he's of age. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, now all, all he's like done. one, yeah, all right, well, yeah, he's 15. It's months. like Twilight, We're all this out. <laughs> it's like Twilight. We're not cutting any of this out, <laughs> yes, 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 you're cutting this part it's out. It's like Twilight, it's cool. I'm talking, I'm just, steering it back to the movie. I have another thing to say about the movie. We're cutting that. Uh, William, wait, 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 wait. One more thing. Can I be the godfather of you and Adam's son's son? <laughs> you can. I am. I'm going to install two way mirrors so you can look through and watch. <laughs> uh-uh. Just Andy regular glass. Oh, this, is, this, this is not. I want you to see me episode. too. <laughs> hey, Adam. Maybe you should move to New York so when he's 17, he'll be legal. Or uh oh. Hey. Uh oh. Who's that? Here comes my future godson. Suddenly, son. come here. Seeing Father? the child no longer makes it funny, and now it's disturbing. <laughs> yeah. We're cutting this out. Yeah, we're cutting you know. this part out. No, you should blur Adam's face in this part, but no one else's. Look. Wow, Adam's boring hey, kid. Are. What's he do? Shit his pants all day? <laughs> Yeah, is he gonna tell a joke? He's a cutie pie. He's a puppy. Here, tell him to say dad. Tell him to say dad in the mic. Into the mic. Careful. But to wit, just tell him to say daddy to William in the mic. Yeah, <laughs> I love you. I'll see. I'll play with you soon. Um, I was gonna say. Beta fathers raise the hottest kids. That's all I'm gonna say. Go on. Pardon. Beta fathers raise the hottest kids. Go on. <laughs> That's true. The healthiest and hottest. One of the <laughs> <laughs> That's probably one of the worst things you've ever said. Um, I was going to say, oh, remember how uh, the credits were going backwards? Wait, remember? what? That was punk rock. Up, up to down. That was or down to up. Yeah, that's punk. That was punk rock. That was a little too. That was a go. little too uh, warped for me. Yeah, that was like I the band's warped tour. Now you're catching. Tour. Now you're catching it was a little too warped. So we it's weird that, that Alex Cox person. never, I mean, he never kind of went into very fun territory again. Everything was kind of up, really obtuse and not 
the connective tissue wasn't like this. And I don't know. I think he got serious. I mean, Sid and Nancy's like a pretty serious movie. Yeah. He wanted think, to be like respected or I think as, it ruined his chances. I don't know. Of he got really experimental Walker, after Sid and Nancy. I heard he ruined his chances at studio, like making bigger movies. With of course. Walker. He didn't want to play ball. Yeah. But that's punk. That is punk. Look, but look at the Cohen brothers, you know, like lots of people were able to sure. consistently to put navigate. out interesting films in the the video era. Um, you know, it just the, so for some reason, nothing ever worked as well again. What can we say? So the yeah. ending <clears throat> when he flies away, he's time traveling, right? Because that Is guy gives that whole big well, because everything had a callback pretty much, so right? Disappearing. Everything yeah. had a callback, and all the knots or whatever, all the strings were tied, whatever the fucking thing, all the ends were whatever. <clears throat> everything came together, and the only thing that didn't come together was time travel on that big speech about time travel. So he essentially time traveled. What time would you like to travel? in this film would it be cool if they went back to like medieval Old times West. oh if like they hey, Adam, i mean so the, so the, so the sequel so the sequel um would be yeah where would they go to repo and then they'd have wherever they land they'd have to start repoing things repo it'd be a real forces. uh army of darkness type situation mm, go back to medieval time and like repoing there was a wagons. sequel floating around and, forever yeah, where- <laughs> That Alex Cox wrote called Otto's Hawaiian Holiday. No and way. And yeah, I, I read the script one time and it was really, really, there wasn't much of a through line. It was super weird. Um, and I don't know if that was like the official script. And I don't really know how far they got into the process of trying to. to... Did you know the, the proposed sequel for Beetlejuice Forever was like Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian? Like. Or what was up much? with Hawaii at the it's time? A good, it's just a, a shitty. Sequel. That's a pathway for a sequel is to going to like the Caribbean or Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii. Like Brady Bunch. To it's like just a shitty. Now. It's just a Weekend shitty idea, too. and it's like, yeah, sure, I'll write a stupid no, fucking screenplay. Good. You'll pay me the same movie, but in the Caribbean. Yeah, it's a way to stupid. And you get a free trip to. We can have Bernie's too. They go to the movie. Caribbean. Yeah, it's like making a better version of the first movie because. Why you can go on location. Caribbean, yeah. Yeah. Tiki things are fun to shoot. It's like you're out on vacation when you see it. We Shut up. I don't know. Like... Tiki things are fun to shoot. Shut I mostly up, just I mostly idiot. like getting <laughs> I like getting a group of friends and some tiki torches together and just walking around downtown. Yeah. Said, hey Charlotte, yeah, saying? Virginia. You know. Huh? <laughs> Who's Virginia? Virginia? I just, you know, I I mean I've said it a lot. I just oh, those ever, roustabout boys? I don't want to be replaced, is the my Rostos. thing. I don't want to be replaced. Well, there's we a sequel on that. There is a sequel called Repo Chick that's really terrible. It's all shot on green screen. Is it Alex Cox or they somebody else? It yeah, it's Alex Cox. Oh, no, wow. it is not. Really? Yeah. The female goes so uh, it. there's a uh, really the last thing that happened to Alex Cox of any studio involvement was he wrote a draft and he was going to direct Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, but he got he left the project, got fired from the pro- project or whatever. And then Terry Gilliam started from scratch, wrote a brand new screenplay. But WGA rules say if like 50 percent of the scenes or characters are in the new draft, you have to credit the original writer. And because it's based on a novel, of course, 50 percent of the same scenes characters. Yeah. So Alex Cox is a credited like writer on Fear and Loathing, even though. He had nothing really involved, but hmm. I wonder how that would have turned out. I would have, I'm always kind of curious thinking like what his version of that movie would have been. Yeah, that could have been, I mean, I don't know that he ever really did much with effects and it seems like that movie sort of needs effects to, uh, if he would have used the same film or whatever, the, the film, uh, the camera guy, who were you just talking uh, about? Robbie, Robbie Mueller. Yeah. If, if he would have used Robbie on fear and loathing, that shit would have been nuts. You could have made. Who knows? We'll just never know. Really trippy looking. Well, like casting would be the big difference. Yeah. Of course. Oh Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm see. I'm picturing with the same cast though. No Johnny Depp. No Benicio. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows? We'll never know. Stanton. Is Alex Cox dead? 
No, it would be cool if it was. Um, so maybe it could still have a couple of punk rockers like. Uh, yeah. Some 41 like, should be Otto and loathing in Las Vegas. And it's just Otto and the repo guy going to Las Vegas and they just repo stuff on hair on speed. OK. It does make me want to do speed. I'll say that. Yeah. I mean, it makes it look pretty. What are you doing tonight, mate? You want to do some speed and go steal cars? I'd like to get sushi and not pay. <sighs> See, I was thinking maybe we do crimes. Nice. You guys are saying lines Very from the good. movie. Very good. I mean, what is our relationship, anyways, Mike? Uh, I'm That's I'm sort asking. of the uh, I'm the I'm the Harry Dean Stanton to your I'm your father figure to. No, I was hoping you'd say fuck. Fuck that. Why is what about our relationship? <laughs> oh, right. oh, my bad. What about our relationship, though, Mike? Fuck that. Oh, here's a little trivia. You know the woman with the metal hand? You know the woman with the metal hand? Yeah. Oh, Her yeah. Crime. So she's in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. She's the woman when Pee Wee goes looking for his bike at the studio and he's like, Where's the stage? And then it's like, that tough that like guy in like the star wars outfit is like oh what stage is it and then there's that woman who's like really butch she's like oh yeah it's down no it's down there or whatever like that's that woman with the metal hand that's that's a good double feature that in this movie i i feel like actually i I agree big adventure peewee's big adventure is pretty punk rock it's from the same like peewee's punk rock there's there's nothing more punk rock than then not only jerking off in a movie theater, but getting caught doing it. That's the most punk rock thing anybody could do. Sid Vicious did that. Punk rock. Yeah. So did Fred Cemented Willard. his legacy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the most punk, punk guy of all time. Let me ask you guys something. What not prog rock better than punk rock, though? Because it's like more complex music, longer songs. It's more bang oh. for your buck, I guess. Like, songs i mean longer. like rush more bang for your punk but... is that the real punk rock is very elaborate elaborate so no. and la- music songs, layering songs daniel about, johnston is punk rock Boston, songs about more than a hard, feeling hard sci-fi concepts <laughs> are what's Drew it. the, the In most fantasy yeah seal you know kissed by a rose Pretty freaking punk. You seen well, that guy's face? On the, I mean, like it does get dark when he's like, it's not face. just kissed by a rose, kissed by a rose from the grave. I mean, that's yeah. some weird. Yeah, that's some spooky ass shit. That's pretty creepy, if you ask me. That'd be cool if he if he like came out and told everybody that the meaning of that song is like, because that's like how he got his scars. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, that is how he got his scars. Kissed by a rose from a grave. Yeah. Making the music video for that on, fight, on the bat right here in the Batman one. Yeah. Yeah. So what's everybody's Switch ratings? In a rose. I gotta go to the bathroom. Out of five? I'll listen. I gotta stop soon. Um five, baby. Five, yeah, I mean this, this, baby. Is, a, this is a hard a five. This is an easy five. Okay. This movie's awesome. Easy five. I'm gonna watch it again, um, probably. You know, it drops a little bit, I think, in like the in how like engaging it is towards the end. Um, but uh, what do you mean? Back with like a good climax and stuff. It's like a, there's a part where I kind of I feel like it. It's kind of like the, la- the last like the direction of it, but like it's also. Good. I I kind of love that the end portion where it feels like everything starts, all these threads start to tie together, and these it's it's exciting and yeah, stuff moving around. And, sure, sure, sure. Um, I love it. Maybe it's, I wasn't it's, making the connections because I'm stupid. Well, and the thing is, I, throughout. The good, Person. Well, throughout the whole movie, every repo is a bigger catch. It's a bigger fish that he catches. Good. Yeah, like the first. Excuse me, I burped. Wow, that's great. Tea I'm drinking. <clears throat> um, you like a repo. Every car, like the first one is like he got twenty five dollars for the car. And then the mm-hmm. second one is a little bit more. And then the big haul is like twenty thousand dollars. And no, he no, doesn't Ryan, know- Ryan, it's like Adam a was game. right. Adam's an idiot. He was right. That's well, why. I I I I didn't disagree with that part, but but then the uh, ultimate like, the ultimate car like, like the like, ultimate repo. Like <laughs> <Ryan>. <laughs> the ultimate hey, repo. You're interrupting Ryan right now. Or can you stop? The ultimate repo was a time traveling car. Wow. So what are they going to repo next? Wow. Yeah. Where do you go? What's greater you? than? What do you get the repo man that repo boat everything? That should be the sequel. <laughs> yeah. Repo boat. Yeah. They're Starts with a rowboat, ends with a yacht. This would be a cool video game, by the way. 
I gave it five stars. Um, yeah, Adam, that'd be a really cool idea for a video game. <laughs> Fucking idiot. God, what a moron. Total that douchebag. Is that not a smart? No, <laughs> Repo Man for <laughs> NES. That would be very cool. That like the NES oh, had like weird movie games. Sort of it would be cool if there was a Repo Man nes game i could see it's, that. it's called grand theft oh, auto you dinguses well like no but it should be the characters from the movie with the plot There's like it should be more elaborate and stupid like the goonies video game or platoon the video game which is real there was I mean, a platoon video game I yeah it was yeah. very it. popular it was like yeah. that's awesome. weird and hard and stupid is there a scene where you like shoot willem dafoe and he like yeah that's the cover like uh dark man has a game i've never seen that movie I, that's on my like in the top of my queue and then et ruined that the et video game ruined movies turning into games no because that's like the no, worst that was video about, game. that was many many years before it ruined atari et Come came on, out right. before all right closing thoughts all right <laughs> yeah sure. uh, i gotta leave i guess <laughs> Adam, just take care of your kid. I want him to grow up big and strong and healthy. <laughs> no, and, um, no, no. This and we're not cutting that any of that out. That it's really funny. Cut. It's really funny. So it goes in. It's if you it's funny. Look, we'll cut his name out. Just bleep his name out. Just bleep his name. Bleep the name, but it's funny. Maybe, maybe. It's a joke. It's humor. It's Mike, silly. I don't actually mean it. It's comedy. I mean, if if there needs to, I don't. I think that I, I'll just say that I've done a lot of wedding ceremonies, and I'm open to do. Thank you. Uh, that's any formal beautiful that's stuff. beautiful that's i plan I on asking. proposing like a gentleman you're getting like if we looped into this if we could have my favorite stepfather mike weeby officiate the wedding between william and your approve. son and me approve. as the godfather i would never approve of this you're not going to be around what? and by godfather <laughs> How long do you think you have left, Adam? I'm gonna be, oh my you're, God! If this happens after I'm dead, you're six four with a giant heart. <laughs> you're gonna be dead as a doornail at like fifty five. Your gonna funeral's hold, gonna be the wedding I ceremony. I will fucking poltergeist you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I mean, I guess I have no idea. What? I'll okay, take good well, care of him. Like Harry Dean Stanton took care of. You're gonna uh, ghost dad Jennifer the situation. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it! This is getting hard to figure out how to cut this part out. We're not cutting it. Yes, we it's are. It's funny. No, we're not. It's watermarked. I'm gonna bro. figure it out. It's watermarked. I'll it's an NFT. You don't edit the show. <laughs> give us. A, yeah, it's an NFT. You out. can't. You can't. NFT, We've taken bro. control. This whole part is not fungible. <laughs> oh, it is fungible. All everything about this is fungible. <laughs> That's why it's son. staying in. The only non-fungible token is my son. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you understand now? Am I saying it in words? You can print understand? another one. Non fungible yeah, token you're... white guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your kid's gonna get funged. That's a good don't album, don't even don't act like your kid ain't gonna get funged when he gets older. Wouldn't it be cool if Repo Man was on <laughs> Disney Plus with like a new cast, multicultural SoundCloud rappers, you know? Zendaya is mm -hmm. uh, replaces Emilio Estevez. Yeah, like a chick. Zendaya. Oh. There's an actor I'd like to funge. All right, what does fungible mean? What does fungible mean? It means having a good time, be... like fun. It's it's a, uh, you know. Oh, it's like that's a good time. Stuff. It's fungible. This Going token. to a water park is fungible. Fungible. Print it. Oh, okay. Okay. So you, you have print fun? money. You can't print fungibles. You know you can. Can't print funny. Um. <laughs> so yeah, money, like the big thing funny. is like you know get your kid in soccer or swimming. Swimming would be perfect. I would prefer a swimmer's body personally. Blonde right. hair cutie uh, like that. Ryan. No, not Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Hey, busy no. I'm trying to figure out how to get it. We're not cutting it cut. out. It's really I'm, funny. I'm gonna add a cut point and then No, you're not. <laughs> Whose name cut are you gonna take? What are you William? gonna do? What are you gonna do? He's take <laughs> I'm are you I'm the woman in the relationship, if that makes you feel better, Adam. I'll be the bottom. That does help a little bit, honestly. <laughs> Not a lot. It doesn't like any good. The kid will does. be so happy just to have like a can of food to eat. He'll be like, oh, wow, this is great. Oh, because you're going to be like one of the only rich people in like 20 years. Everybody, yeah. like my family is going to be super poor and shit. Think, yeah. think about right now. Like, think real quick. Think like, about what your kid's going like to look like. It's like an Afghani situation. 
right. picture your kid what he's, what he's gonna look like when he's 19 with him right now <laughs> <laughs> you can leave all right, all right. and we're cutting right. it out so give a give we're us not a good, cutting like, it out cut point provide a good cut point ryan we're not just cutting think it out think of what your kid's gonna look like when he's 19 and then think about him making love with william <laughs> <laughs> so Mike, okay, you're going to give a good cut point. So, We're not uh, cutting it. Okay, Mike's going to. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> and we'll see you next time at the movies. <laughs> you got any? Um, uh, it actually, seems like it's going to be a shows? hard cut point. You got honestly. any musical shows coming? I'll tell you what's going to cut, Adam. <laughs> Hopefully, your son's body is going to be cut <laughs> by dick in his asshole. Oh, oh no! Oh, you already said you're the bottom. I thought you're the bottom. You're gonna swiggle your, your little skinny your ass dick all the way around. Okay, that's that's the reality. You cut that joke. You're gonna bottle, bottle now I owe everybody. Yeah, a punch we'll line. cut that part out. We'll cut that part out. All right. Thanks for you have to, doing the show. You have to take it yeah, too far. Fun. Nice talking with you again. Yeah. Good seeing you, dude. All right. Peace. Adam, we oh. still know, we know you're still there, dude. <laughs> <William> <laughs> Just because you got he's muted. <laughs> all right. Well. That's the end of the show. There's nothing else to yeah. talk about. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say, you you got any music, punk rock musical shows coming up? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go on tour uh, starting uh, this week. Here, um, I'll be in the Midwest for the next two weeks uh, with my band Dracula's. It's K D R A K U L A S. Online. Um, Where can we find Dracula's? With a K. Any... Dracula's with a K. This is my Dracula new favorite K. band. They're punk rock. They rock. They kick ass. Dude, they're fun. Mike puts on a show. Mike, you put on a show. Oh, it's thank good. you. We're playing Austin on the on on uh, Friday. If you're around, right? I mean, no, I'm busy, but um, uh, trust okay, me, no. you, yeah. you never miss it. Anybody no, listening, yeah, yeah. never miss an yeah. opportunity to go. What do you have going on Friday? But, what's what's going on Friday that you can't make? Yeah, it? no, totally. So, it, to the yeah, listeners, no. though, but, every, but I was gonna say that you could come and and you could do merch for me. And uh, oh yeah, okay, I'll be there. Yeah, your treat. Dine Alone Records. Playing, where are you playing? Are you in Dine Alone Records. Yeah, Dine Alone Records, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, all that stuff. Uh, Dirt Nap Records as well. And it's what's your be, Instagram? Uh, at Drax T X D R A X T X. Oh, hell yeah! For real, it is very fun shows to watch. Pretty and, punk rock. Pretty. Drac- it's pretty fun. It's pretty fungible. I'll tell you that. Much. It, yeah, well, that's what we. That's what we're going for fungible rock it's my music. favorite punk band Did you listen to them? dude i'm listening right now i go on <laughs> youtube i go on youtube i type in draculas with a k and then i watch dark black music video oh yeah with a canon logo i mean this is perfect for movies fans yeah we do uh we do have a license in some horror thing coming out called sink uh no the movie's called seek What's that, your favorite yeah, song? song yeah. We'll play a little song to take out the episode. Uh, let's play the Dark Black. That's a that's a hit. That's a big hit with the kids. I also I could definitely see a couple Dracula songs being played in this movie if y'all existed at the time. And that's the Man. goal. That's the goal. I mean, like honestly, like the the band, like the the idea, of the band is uh, is that all the songs are written from the point of view of like made up characters in like a late 70s warriors-esque metropolis it's kind of like the idea of like of um punk rock at that era like the media's version of punk rock i wanted to write like a whole like the idea being like all the songs have to be a character that i've made up that lives in that world and uh there would be a gang called the draculas instead of the warriors and it's just kind of a uh, fun new york times square sleaze a lot of songs about prostitution and and porno movies and stuff like that i'm telling you it's Real like fun. la downtown new york downtown that's in a cyberpunk cyberpunk vibes and if you're a suburban kid you know listen to them they'll make you cool make you cool yes you will get to do drugs yeah pro drug songs there's swearing in the songs there's what more could you ask for there's cursing nudity be punk without it there's nudity in the lyrics i mean That's who doesn't beautiful. like to who doesn't like to read about tits or it's fungible or balls or bushes or <laughs> butts fun. even i'm about butts it. with balls on it i mean there's one of the songs has that for sure absolutely 
This song about a a guy that has a butt and he's got balls tattooed on his butt, and we just de- <laughs> we describe it we describe it in in the type of language with a heck of a backbeat too, a backbeat you can't lose it and um that's great it's, it's great that's fantastic it's I'm so proud of you for you know and it, I want to uh, anybody listening it is NSFW. Not, not safe, safe for, 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 for whites. No white people. Oh, this is not, oh. <laughs> this is not oh, white people shit. music. All right. Well, I felt it felt dangerous to listen to for me. Well, you're white, so it should should have scared you, freaked you out a little bit. I was very, sh- very shook. Hmm. All right, I do have to pee now myself. All, All right. right, that's the end of the episode. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for having me. That was fun. Next week's movie, American Gigolo. Is that oh, real? That's crazy. He talks about uh, is wait which oh uh, the rich, that's Richard Gere, but it's a remake yeah. of Breathless, right? No, that's the Breathless remake. No, this is a movie about a guy in L.A. who's a gigolo, making money, living the American dream. It's the other side of L.A. that you won't see in Repo Man. You see the Man. fancy West Side, the Beverly Hills side. I had like ten jobs out in L.A. too, and Repo Man and Gigolo were the two that I wanted the most. Yeah, is that is is the Breathless? They just is. The Richard Gere Breathless is just called Breathless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tons of nudity in that movie. Check it out. You want to see really hot shit yeah. naked? Is that the Check one that where he's out. obsessed with uh, Silver, uh, Silver Surfer? Silver Surfer, yes. And yeah. Tarantino copied that in uh, Reservoir Dogs. Or... Yeah. Big okay. Tarantino influence, surprisingly. All right. That'll be a good one. But yeah, Richard Gere. Be a good month be of cool. movies. <clears throat> no, All right, guys. I got to go squirt, gotta go squirt some liquid out of my dingus. <laughs> Think of me.